Come Holy Spirit, come fill my heart, refresh my soul. This is your season of grace come with your host, Spirit, Patrick Henry Eden. Get ready for Grace Revolution. When you recognize the grace of your time, then you can do what other times had not done. You see, God spoke to Abraham and said, as far as your eyes can see. Remember? Genesis chapter 13. When Lot had left him, God told him, look to the east, to the west, the north, and the south. All that your eyes can see, I give to you. God spoke to Isaac in, in, between Genesis chapter 25, 26. In 26, when Isaac was about going to Egypt because of the famine, after the famine of the time of Abraham, his, Abraham, his father, God told him, do not go to Egypt. Stay in this land and I will bless you. He said, this land, God spoke to him about the land. Jacob took the blessing that belonged to Esau and aided by his mother, he ran the direction of Laban, his un uncle. The night that was the most terrifying night of his life became the night of encounter. For as he slept with a piece of stone as his pillow, a ladder stood from the earth resting on the heaven and atop it the one who chanted his name the God of Abraham the God of Isaac and he told him this land that you lie on I will give it to you these people received the promise but it took a generation there is a particular generation and God says, I should tell you there is a generational grace. Yeah. When you recognize the generational grace of your family, then you are no longer afraid of what your father was afraid of. When you recognize that the time has come for stories to be rewritten, and that there is grace for you and upon you to do what others tried and failed. You see, at the end of the encounter of Saul and Samuel, Samuel told Saul, when you have seen all these signs, do whatever is laid in your hand. You see, there comes a time that you go ahead and do all that is laid in your hand. All that your hands can find to do. It is a time of recognition of grace. There comes a time you find yourself at the intersection of purpose and grace to fulfill purpose. And when you wake up and live in recognition and awareness that there is something that can be done and there is grace that is available for you to do it, then you know that you are the generation that steps into the promised land. A generation that has the privilege to step into the land that have been issues in promise. A promise is not meant to remain a promise forever. There comes a season when promise transitions into fulfillment you are sitting in your fulfillment yeah. you are not another person you are you yeah. and there is a reason why you are you you see God is giving me ministration from this scripture the Lord said to Moses send some men to explore the land of Canaan this is no longer a time of promise it's a time of entering so we are face to face the biblical generation of conclusion and closure. The closure in what had remained only in the place of anticipation, of hope, of promise. And God says we are bringing a closure to this issue of the promised land. We are bringing a conclusion to this promise we are drawing a line between a will and I have but you are the one to step in 
say, go and explore. Find out whether I spoke the truth to Abraham. Find out whether this land flow is actually with honey and milk. Go check me out. God is a God that at some moments will want you to check him out. Confirm my word. Find out whether I have lied. Find out whether I have changed. He says, send them. And they were to be leaders. Look at that scripture. Verse 2 says, from each ancestral tribe, send one of his leaders. Why ancestral tribes? Because this has been ancestral hope. I want you to know one thing. And I will want you to remember it all the time. That there is a reason why you are here. What pains you is what calls you. What you are ashamed of in the family, what you are afraid of in your time, is the reason why you came to this time. Esther had to come to know. Mordecai sent messages. I said, you, a young girl, you've been under my tutelage. Now get this one fact from me before the end. Who knows whether it was for a time like this that you came. No one is in a time without a reason for a time. I am just trying to tell you that there is a generational grace. And if you recognize it, you can do impossible things. You see, Mary gave birth to Jesus because the generational grace came upon him. Mary was just somebody who had to enter into the promise. Before Isaiah had promised, a maiden will be a child, will be with a child. He shall give birth to a child and shall, she shall call her, call him Emmanuel. God with us. It had been prophesied that government shall be laid upon his shoulder. That was just about the future. A hope and a promise. There had to come a, a, a generation. A generation with generational grace. There was a reason why Joseph was a carpenter. There is a reason why Mary was young and a virgin. There is a reason why they had not come to live together and to actually consummate their marriage. Because God had a different purpose. If you know why life hasn't gone the way you want it. If you, if you just know why things are not exactly the way you wanted it. If you can just yield your heart and say, Lord, I recognize there is a generational grace. Let's, let us settle this matter. The land that the ancestors could not take. The territory that the people of the past had negotiated and mortgaged away. He said, no, I'm looking for it all. Oh, marriage in my family line, I'm taking you back. Wealth in my family line, I'm taking you back. Strength in my family line, I'm taking you back. Ability and stability, I'm taking you back. They never succeed. That's what they said. But I say in my time, we will succeed. No, it's about generational grace. If you recognize that there is a generational grace hanging upon your head, and if you recognize that you can take advantage of that grace and do what has never been done, and break every protocol and then leave, then you stand up and lift up your tongue and say, Lord, I recognize. <laughs> I recognize I was born for a reason. I recognize there is a reason why I am here. I recognize there is a power working in my favor. I recognize there is an ability working for me. I recognize there is, there is, there is a grace working for me. I want you to speak like you mean it. I recognize. And I'm not going to allow any narrative to rob me of my generational opportunity. I'm not going to allow any narrative any narrative of tradition any narrative of ancestral tradition and limitation any narrative of sinfulness and weakness and limitation i am not going to allow it in my generation we will do the impossible in my generation we have to do we have the mandate to do the impossible in this generation those who come from families that have never seen money will see money in this generation those who come from families things have never worked they will see things work in this generation those who have never seen lights in their family they will become the lights of the family in this generation those who come from places where failure is the default mode they will rise from failure and they will succeed in this generation people will rise from weakness in this generation people will rise from failure in this generation people will rise from confusion you are the generation I want to tell you you are the generation yes brother you are the generation you don't have to you know you don't have to sit down and blame your father and your mother and blame your situation on the issue of the past they never could do this for me there is a generational grace upon you that's why i leave 
for as long as I live. I will challenge my generation that there is a grace upon us. Grace is not given for ordinary things. Grace is given for extraordinary things. I recognize it. I know it. I refuse to settle for the ordinary. These guys actually went. You cannot imagine that they actually went into the land. Let's read from verse 20. There's a part that says they were asked to find out how the soil is. Is it fertile or poor? Are there trees on it or not? Do your best to bring back some of the fruit of the land. It was the season for the first ripe grapes. So they went up. They actually went. And they explored the land. From the desert of Zin, as far as Rehob, toward Lebo Hamath. They went up through the Negev and came to Hebron, where Ahiman, Sheshai, and Talmai, the descendants of Anak, lived. Hebron had been built seven years before Zion in Egypt. When they reached the valley of Iskol, they cut off a branch bearing a single cluster of grapes. Two of them carried it on a pole between them, along with some pomegranates and figs. You see, these guys went, these ancestral representatives, they went, they stepped into what Abraham only heard about in promise. Abraham did not eat, did not carry the grapes, did not see the figs as his own. Abraham had to buy a portion of land to bury the wife. But these guys had now stepped into the promise as fulfillment. And they represented every ancestry. God was telling them, I am faithful. God was expecting a song. God was expecting a jubilation. God was expecting a thank you party. They actually saw the evidence that this land true of the truth of the land flowing with milk and honey. I want to tell you there is a land in their own time they saw. But as they saw the beauty of the land, they also saw. You see, what God has for you is actually what he said. You see, the promises of God are beautiful for you. You see, his plan for you is actually beautiful. When he says, I know the plans, that I know the thoughts that I think towards your plans, Thoughts of prosperity and peace, not disaster. That is what it means. The plan for you is that you may have the hope you've been longing for. That's what it means. There's milk and there is honey in the land. Your marriage is exactly what he said it is. It is. Your children, they shall be taught of the Lord and great shall be their peace. It is actually true. While these guys saw this, they also saw that. Now, let me share with you something, their reaction. From verse 26, they came back to Moses and Aaron and the whole Israelite community at Kadesh in the desert of Paran. There, they reported to them and to the whole assembly and showed them the fruit of the land. Perfect. Reported to them, the land is fruitful. The land is green. The land is beautiful. They reported no miscarriage in the land. They reported no barren in the land. They reported no sickness in the land. Everything is beautiful. But that's not all they reported. 
They gave Moses this account. We went into the land. This is verse 27. We went into the land to which you sent us. And it does flow with milk and honey. Praise God. Testimony. It does flow with milk and honey. Here is its fruit evidence that it is so. That means God does not lie. Then the next verse is heartbreaking. But... But the people who live there are powerful. Oh. And the cities are fortified oh, and very large. We even saw descendants of Anak there. And the descendants of Anak here, they are referring to the Nephilims. The Nephilim, the, the giants. Look at the next verse. The Amalekites live in the Negev, the Hittites, the Jebusites, and the Amorites live in the hill country. And the Canaanites live near the city, near, near, live near the sea and along the Jordan. Then Caleb silenced the people. You see, these people, they talked about the milk, the honey, but they saw something else. You see, why a lot of people will never fulfill purpose? Because while they see the milk and the honey, they also see the other one. The powerful forces that occupy the territory. That is why not everyone will be able to take the territories that have been allotted. God has territories for you. You don't need to pray for it. Before you were born, The issue is in taking the territory. God had promised Abraham, everyone God has called like Abraham, he has promised territories. I will give you. Have you ever had dreams? Those are the things he wants to give you. Have you ever had deep desire, a passion that wakes up with you and goes with you to bed? A plan that consumes you, a beauty that makes you alive? That's what God wants to do. But the issue is in taking it. Because whereas the land is green and beautiful and actually flows with milk and honey, there are some guys that are powerful there. The descendants of Anak. The descendants of Anak that occupy marriage. Whereas the marriage that God gave you was meant to flow with milk and honey and be actually beautiful, there are descendants of Anak powerful and strong living in fortified cities within the territory that is your own that has been given to you the point is this until you dislodge them that marriage will not flow with milk and honey that is why so many people fail and when they fail they say it is not possible shut up Say, I couldn't do it. Don't generalize your, your failure to make it look like God is a liar. There is a territory. Tell somebody there is a territory. The issue is in taking it. You see, the design of the enemy, the plan of the enemy, that's why you see certain dreams. That's why you go through certain things. It's such that you wake up in the morning one day and you hate the territory that is meant to be yours. You actually get scared. You are actually afraid of the things that actually belong to you. That is the work of the enemy. The enemy walks through the descendants of Anak. You see, what God has promised you is beautiful. God has never lied. It's not a son of man that he may, he may lie. He does not. He said, the scripture said, these men went in and confirmed that the land flows with milk and honey. But while they saw the milk and honey, they also saw the descendants of Anna, the powerful guys who have been living there for generations. You see, the territory of marriage you must take has been occupied by what will fight you. Test somebody, get ready to fight. Our generation is a generation under 
the influence of deception a generation that feels that you can escape fighting the battle of destiny and prevailing in Christ and then you can do some assignment and transfer your power of taking the land to some things that you do whereas God is asking you stand with me stand by me and stand in me I will be your victory you are saying I give things I do things I do things and I don't need God. All these assignments, if you have ever done them, tell me the result. Please, if you have ever done assignment, can you volunteer and give us a, a report? Tell me what has changed. The territory is still occupied by the Anakim, by the descendants of Anak. The giants are still there. The point is this, God knew that this territory that he had given them had been occupied. It could be sickness occupying the territory that should give you peace. You see, some people soon after marriage, you now discover there is a descendant of Anak that lives in the marriage home. And if you are not careful, you now begin to fight your wife and fight your husband. Thinking your husband is the issue or your wife is the issue. No. There is a descendant of Anna. The intention is to make, deny you of the milk and the honey of the marriage. So that you can now say like every other person, marriage doesn't work. God punish the devil. Everything God gives works. But the point is this, there are also the descendants of Anak that are claim that this is their territory. There are descendants of Anak who prosper from marriages that do not work. There are descendants of Anak who prosper from infirmity. Some people say from the time after our wedding, my wife has been sick all the time. Some people after wedding, the man loses potency. That's the son of Anak. That's the descendant of Anak telling you, <laughs> we've been here before. Go ask your father what we did to your father. Or if you don't know about your grandfather, but at least find out from the life of your father, how did your father fare in our hands? The intention is to scare you out of the land so that you cannot trust God. You will say God promised, but he cannot give. No, God knows that every promise he has made you, the sons of Anak, they have gone ahead to take possession. But he also knows something. That he has given you victory before you know it. From the day he gave you the land, when he gave you the land, he also gave you victory over the land. Tell somebody, did you hear that? Yeah. I know there is something you are going through now. Am I talking to somebody? Before you entered into that thing you are going through, he already gave you victory. What you are going through right now is the manifestation of the giant that lives in your territory. What you are going through right now in the beautiful gift God had given to you. It could be your children. Your children could be the territory you need to take. All your children, they have been designed to be beautiful. But the sons of Anak, they tell you, no, we have been here in this promised land. We have been here for long and we don't get out just because you are coming in. The problem these men had is that they did not turn to God. But in this generation, we shall turn to God. If you are going through something, that is a descendant of Anak. That's a giant in the promised land. The intention is to make you feel the milk does not work. The honey does not work. As for me and my family, the milk works. The honey works. The day God called Abraham and told him, come and I will show you a land. The day God told him, you see this land? As far as your eyes can see, I will give to you. That was the day God also gave him victory. The God who gave you marriage gave you victory. The God who gave you children gave you victory. No, the God who gave you a job gave you victory. The God who gave you business gave you victory. Now, the God who gave you house gave you victory. The God who gave you studies gave you admission gave you victory. The God who gave you that gift also gave you victory. The point is this, that he gave you victory doesn't mean there is no fight. Without fight, there is no victory. He gave you victory in advance so that when you see the fight, you can fight. Tell somebody, bouncer. You know, when you're attending a party, a serious dinner, 
before you get in there, they will give you a pass. And by the time you go there, you see somebody who looks so unfriendly. Does not speak your language. That's the son of Anak. I don't know if I'm talking to somebody. It happens in marriage. It happens in everything. You want to enter into the peace of enjoyment. You see somebody who does not, he doesn't look like your brother. He doesn't look like your sister. You smile, he doesn't smile. He's not friendly. He's neither for you nor against you. He's just occupying. Until you prove that you have license. And so, what is requested, what had been designed was that when you get to that point, you bring out what had been given to you to solve that problem in advance. If you understand me, say, I understand. <laughs> now, assuming you've been given this pass, but you don't know the use. Assuming you've been given this pass, you don't know you've been given. Perhaps they put it in a, an envelope and gave to you. And you say, oh, thou shalt not open this envelope. For the day I open it, I may lose something. So you keep it beautiful kept. But you go there, the unfriendly man does not allow you to enter and you get angry. This man said I should come here, that I'm going to enjoy, that I was part of his friend. Why this nonsense? Why has he embarrassed me? The point is that you don't know you have victory before you came. But the one who knows it comes to that point produces the card and the way he is made and he enters and he enjoys everything that had been said he will enjoy. That is what it means to take territory. Taking territory means you come with already given victory. For every challenge you will meet in life, there is a pre-package of victory. The day you know this, you can cheat death. You can cheat on cancer. You can break up with failure. There is nothing you come into in life that you don't already carry solution. Except it's not the promised land. You see, the God who promised them the land also promised them victory. He gave them victory. Oh, what is the proof? When they came to the Red Sea, did they fight with the Red Sea to cross? They didn't fight. The staff in the hand of Moses crossed it. Opened the Red Sea and they passed through. When they needed water to drink in the desert, what happened? The rock gave them water. The one who did it yesterday is still in the business of doing it today. The one who did it in the Red Sea does not give up doing it. If he promised you, he will give it to you. Romans chapter 8 verse 35 said, What shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble? Is it trouble that is the descendant of Anak Occupying the territory that God had promised you? Is it hardship? Is it persecution that is standing and saying You will not live where God said you will live? That you will not do what God demanded of you? Is it famine? Unana, is it dryness or is it nakedness is it danger is it the sword is it witchcraft is it the marriage is it spirit husband is it spirit wife where do they come from who are their parents how did they originate did they die on the cross to make me fail no tell me what sickness died on the cross for me to die Tell me what demon offered himself on the cross for me to suffer. But there's one who offered himself on the cross for me to succeed. Every sacrifice that has been made to bring you down is nothing compared to the sacrifice that has been made to bring you up. I don't know whether you heard me. Whatever has been done to bring you down is nothing compared to what has been done to lift you up. Now, the point is this, you now, to, you now have to recognize where I am right now. You, the Anna came that I'm facing right now, I already have victory over you. I want you to make a confession over your land. Whatever is occupying your land, I don't know what territory you want to take tonight. Finally, be strong in the Lord. The Lord who gave it to you says, finally be strong, it is time to take it. 
after all the wandering and all the fear and anxiety, finally, be strong. I don't know what is telling you be weak. It is God himself in his word that says, finally. He didn't say be strong in your father, be strong in your mother. So you cannot say, but I don't have a father, I don't have a mother. He didn't say be strong in a friend or a brother. You cannot uh, he said be strong. He didn't say be strong in the governor or president. So you cannot say, I don't know the president, I don't know. He said be strong in the Lord. This is where the scriptures say those who know their God shall work strong. He shall do exploit. So finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. He didn't talk about his power, mighty. This is our God is the God who saves, he's mighty to save. He said, put on the full armor of God. He didn't say the armor of your father. The scriptures said the armor of flesh will fail. Lima Catelebra, Deuteronomy chapter 33, verse 29. Look at this. Let's read it together. Say, blessed are you, O Israel, who is like you, a people saved by the Lord. He is your shield and helper and your glorious sword. Your enemies will go up before you and you will trample down their high places. 